Hi, and welcome back to episode two of Olitopa, where I showcase this Olivetti L1 M20. In episode one, and if you haven't seen it, you need to start there. So the link is up there and the link for it is in the description. Go watch that so you have a better understanding how we reached this point. But it went a little bit too far, um, half an hour, and I want to make this episode shorter. So this episode is gonna be about the power supply and this is where we left off in episode one. So I'll move the camera closer to, we will try and open up and see if there's anything inside that looks suspicious, you know, fishy smells or something is leaking, is the fuse okay and, and normal stuff like that. If it seems okay, then we'll obviously try to turn it on and put some measure to it and see if the right voltages comes out. So let me arrange the camera, move you closer and let's crack open the power supply. So before we start, I just need to mention that this is a power supply. This one takes 220 here in Denmark and um, this is high voltage. So if you're going to play with power supply, be very careful. Don't take my words for the truth as I don't have a degree in power supply. So I'm just focusing when I'm doing power supplies on the low voltage side, the high voltage side where we have huge capacitors that stores voltage up to three, four, five hundred volts. Um, even when you unplug the power supply, it still stores it in for a while so you can still get a, sh a shock on it. So be careful when you're playing with power supplies. So I will unscrew the three screws here and I saw another screw down there. So that's gonna be the first thing as I can see um, then this cover can be taken off and we should be able to look into the power supply. That was actually easy. So um, the power for the motherboard comes in this one. And um, I will say this color is gray, this orange, the dark gray, red, light gray, orange, and it goes that way. It can only go this way, right? And the two Molex connector for the floppy disk drives, they are not the same length in this unit. One is longer than the other. And the short one went here, the long one went here. So short and long. Cool. So. Uh, let me just have a look. Let's do it together, right? So, obviously this is a switch power supply and it goes from the high voltage area where it gets uh, rectified and goes into the low voltage area here. And I was just looking if there's any um, voltage mention on the output of the power supply, but uh, there is not. Um, I can only assume this is usually plus five and minus and plus 12 volt that comes out of the power supply in this area here. And um, I was gonna see if I can find a fuse. So um, yeah, I think it's this one. It must be, right? Um, or oh, is there anything? No. So let's um, take this one out and measure this one before. And um, I also, just whilst looking at that, I, I'm not sure. Um, let me find something to peek with. And hopefully it comes on the camera. There, on this uh, capacitor, which is at 1000 farad 16 volts, on this side, it looks some green gunge. Could it be corrosion? I don't know how that could happen. 
I need to see that. What if I peek at it? Does it go wrong? Oh, sorry for... It actually comes off. Okay, but it looks like corrosion. So this one is suspicious. This one over here. Sorry, I'm pointing at the camera <laughs> there. So this one looks a little blackened in here, but I don't see any leakages on neither of the sides. So um, let's check this fuse. And we probably have to check these out and have them tested. Uh, and hopefully I have some spare ones, I'm not sure. So let me um, figure out to get the fuse out, which is over here. Um, I think I can just lift this, yes, okay. Uh, can it come out? Uh, some ground cable in the way of this. Uh, come on. Um, There we go. So that's the lid for the fuse. It's a little bit of a weird fuse. On the board, it stays 3.15 amp for the fuse, and the actual fuse 250 volts. And that's all. What's on the other side? Just the name of the fuse from the United States. So Sorry, I hope this was in. So, 250 volts, and it should be a 3.15 amp fuse. Let's test it. Let's see. Yep. So the fuse is okay. So we'll put that back in. Put back in the cover for the fuse. So we all good over in this area. And um, how do we get into this power supply? I need to have the board out. Uh, there seems to be a what, plastic sheet down here, I don't know. Yeah, okay. So, um, I see two screws going into these, and these seem to be welded into this plate. So, the, the normal flat screw, oh, yes, of course you can't see it, um, is in there. And it's over here, inside there. Um, I probably need to unscrew these two screws. This is going to be a pain in the butt because I'll lose the screw in the power supply and I'll be having struggle to get the screws back in again. But let's just, um, I really think that we need to pay attention to this. Um, so let, let's, let's give it a go. I found a long screwdriver. And yes, I lost the screws inside, but I'm assuming when I, maybe we should yeah, unscrew this one. And then I think we can pull it out, but I may be wrong. It seems stuck. How can it be stuck? Oh, could it be the power switch?
power supply is out. What a struggle. Um, um, I know I will from time to time probably um, say that this looks like the M24. And I again discovered something that's similar to what I've seen in the M24. And it's actually very nice to see where some of the design decision that went into the M24, they came from. So the power supply in the M24, you've seen many of those. I've, I've refurnished and, and made all those work and, and polished them and whatever have you. So um, maybe this way. So the board sits in here, and that's for all the Olivetti computers in the early days. So this came from there also. So yet again, similarities. But the board is out. Um, and let's find the screws down here. And um, if we just have a look at the actual power board soldering, it looks really, really nice. Beautiful. And there's absolutely nothing of any concern. If I just briefly look at it, I don't see any bad soldering or anything. Um, but we were talking about these two. And I think I'm actually okay with them, to be honest. Cannot be corrosion because there's no corrosion going anywhere. But um, let me um, try to um, go briefly through the power supply and see how I get this out. What I mean is I'm desoldering one leg on each side down here and then I will measure the resistance of the capacitors. So they've been tested. They're actually okay. But I'm a little bit concerned with this. So what I will do, I will order, I don't have them. Sadly, I don't have any replacements at hand. So I will order two new ones just to be in the safe time uh, in the long run. I will actually order the complete set and put them in but we don't need to see me do that. So um, let me build this back again. I'm comfortable with the capacitors. Everything looks nice. I will uh, sort them back. I will clean the PCB board because I just like that it's very clean. It's just a little bit dusty. It's no, probably some air and then it'd be fine. And then we shall hook it up and test it. Um, I also went through some of the joints and um, um, I, look whether everything is soldered safely together, nothing is like falling out, or it's soldered joints all over the board, and it's crispy. I'm very happy with this power supply. I trust that it actually works. Let's test the power supply. Let's hook it up. I think um, we should put some load on it too, right? But um, but what? I'm not sure because I'm not I'm not sure about the connections because obviously the gray one here that is ground. But why isn't there ground on both the lines? So I don't think it's compatible with the AT uh, the PC style. So I will, um, let's try it out first and let's um, just see if we get any shortage. We do not. If I take here, so the, these two orange are the same. So let's put 
this over here. And we'll find another one so we get both of them at the same time so we don't need to do this for too long. Like this. Like this. There we go. Let's hook on some power to have here. And let's hope nothing blows up. So let me turn it on. So over here we have 1188, 5.21. All good. Perfect. Let's take off the power, see how long it stores. So the bleeding resistor seems actually to bleed out the power from the two huge capacitors that are sitting over here on this high voltage side very fast. So it's a good power supply. So with the sun out, we fixed or we tested the power supply and it's working. So that's a good thing, right? So we need to wrap this up because I want to make these short ones. So I'm hoping I'm succeeding this time in this episode too. Um, in episode three, we should probably be looking at the floppy disk drives, uh, investigating whether they're working or not and see if we need to do anything. And obviously we need to clean them. Um, so please like this one, please subscribe. And please ring that bell so you get notified when episode three of the next hashtag Olitopa, where we feature this Olivetti L1M20. For now, my name is Taibo. See you soon. Goodbye.